Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching the English news of Bing Phuc Radio Television Station and Newspaper. I'm with you with the latest news for today. Bing Phuc enhances female leadership participation in party committees. Improving machine operation skills for businesses and workers. Vietnamese top leader visits Chinese Central Party School. Special Bait on Light Party General Secretary Lord. On the afternoon of August 19 at Bing Phu's online meeting point, Deputy Secretary of the Provincial Party Committee and Chairwoman of the Provincial People's Council, Huynh Thi Hang, presided over a scientific workshop discussing solutions to increase female leadership participation in party committees. The workshop was jointly organized by the Ho Chi Minh National Academy of Politics, the Vietnam Sociological Association, the Embassy of Ireland, the United Nations Development Program, and the provinces of Bing Dương and Bing Phuc, both in person and virtually. Bing Phuc is recognized for its high proportion of women in leadership and management positions across all levels compared to other provinces nationwide. Female participation in the provincial party committee exceeds 28%, over 18% at the district level, and more than 22% at the grassroots level. The Bing Phu Provincial Party Standing Committee has focused on directing party committees and departments to develop training and development plans for female cadres, ensuring that their skills and qualifications align with their roles. Notably, over 30% of participants in provincial training programs are women. The province has also increased the recruitment of female party members to build a long-term talent pool for the province's future development. At the workshop, Deputy Secretary Huynh Thi Hang emphasized that Bing Phu will continue to strengthen the participation of female cadres in party committees at all levels. The province plans to implement comprehensive solutions for female cadre management, focusing on inspection, supervision, and timely adjustments to address challenges during implementation. Additionally, efforts will be made to regularly consolidate and strengthen women's organizations at all levels to meet the demands of the new situation. On August 20th, Chairwoman of the Provincial People's Committee Trần Tuệ Hiền and Vice Chairman Trần Tiết Minh chaired the meeting to review the project plan for the 50th anniversary celebration of the liberation of Budang from December 14, 1974 to December 14, 2024. The celebration is set to include three main parts, a formal ceremony with approximately 300 guests, a festival titled Eco in the South of Pestles in Bombo Village that will create the rice pouting movement of the Stiang ethnic people in Bombo Village during the resistance war against the United States, and a series of welcoming activities expected to take place over three days in early November 2024. During the meeting, Vice Chairman Chen Tuyết Ming emphasized that in 2024, Budang District, Dong Soi City, and Phuc Long Town will all hold Liberation Day celebrations. As there are significant provincial events, the Department of Culture, Sports, and Tourism was tasked with establishing an organizing committee and preparing a detailed plan to ensure that the celebrations are conducted safely, economically, and without unnecessary extravagance. Chairwoman Chen Tuyên also suggested that Budang invite businesses to develop tourism tours to Bombo Village, adding more significance and value to the series of activities. In Phuc Long Town, the Bing Phu Casual Association, in collaboration with the Provincial Department of Labor, Work in Violence and Social Affairs, organized a training course on production safety for local cashew processing businesses and workers. The course, focusing on techniques for operating pressure equipment and boilers, consisted of 15 theory sessions and one practical session. Participants, including representatives from businesses and machine operators, were equipped with knowledge on labor safety and machinery operation. The training aims to enhance participants' professional skills, ensure workplace safety, and reduce the risk of unfortunate incidents.
Party General Secretary and State President Tholam visited and had a working session with the Central Party School of the Communist Party of China in Beijing on August 20th morning as part of his state visit to China. The Chinese Central Party School provides training for medium and high-ranking officials, as well as cadres working on youth affairs from across China. It serves as a national research institute for social sciences and philosophy, and also a new-style high-level advisory body with Chinese characteristics. Addressing the meeting, General Secretary and President Talum praised the school for its contributions in research, teaching, cadre training, and innovation, calling it a valuable reference for Vietnam. He emphasized the importance of personnel and theoretical affairs in party building drawing on the teachings of Ho Chi Minh and former General Secretary Nguyen Phu Trong. Lum highlighted the long-standing cooperation between the Chinese Central Party School and Vietnamese institutions, including the Ho Chi Minh National Academy of Politics. He also outlined the Communist Party of Vietnam's upcoming tasks, including preparations for the 14th National Party Congress, and urged further cooperation between the two schools and party building, personnel training, and theoretical research. Writing in the guest book, Lum expressed confidence in the school's future achievements and hoped for deeper cooperation with its Vietnamese counterparts to strengthen the Vietnam-China Comprehensive Strategic Partnership and build a community with a shared future. The same day, the top leader and his entourage were seen off at Beijing Capital International Airport, concluding a three-day state visit to China at the invitation of General Secretary of the Communist Party of China Central Committee and President of China Xi Jinping and his spouse. Prime Minister Phan Minh Chin chaired a meeting of permanent cabinet members, administrators and agencies on law bidding on August 20th. More details are in the following report. The Prime Minister emphasized unlocking resources, boosting enterprise autonomy and accountability under the state capital management law. For the revised corporate income tax law, the focus is on creating an investment-friendly environment. The revised special consumption tax law should balance business support with minimizing negative impacts on the economy and society. The law on the digital technology industry needs to align with the latest resolutions and conclusions on digital technology development. The Prime Minister urged agencies to integrate feedback and finalize the draft laws according to legal regulations. On the morning of August 20th in Hanoi, Nhân Dân or People newspaper launched a special page on the late Party General Secretary Nguyễn Phú Trọng. Standing member of the Secretariat Lung Kung attended the event. The special pitch on General Secretary Nguyễn Phu Trọng includes nearly 1,000 articles, photos, videos, and multimedia press products with modern press technologies on digital platforms. The page features five columns, namely firmly following the chosen path, messages for the country and people, opinions of leaders and experts, a vision for the general secretary, and news. It is an important database serving the research and reference work of Carlos, party members and the people, said Le Guk Ming, editor-in-chief of Nhân Dân newspaper. On this occasion, the Nhân Dân newspaper opened a photo exhibition on General Secretary Nguyễn Phu Trọng, featuring 44 photos on his life and career. It will run until August 22nd at the Nhân Dân headquarters, No. 71 Hang Chung Street, Hanoi. Insiders said that rice exports could bring in a record turnover of 5 billion US dollars this year if the pace of shipment is maintained as present. There is ample room for Vietnamese rice exports as demand in major rice importers such as the Philippines, Indonesia, China and Africa is huge. Data of the Vietnam Customs showed that since the beginning of the year to mid-July, Vietnam shipped more than 4.8 million tons of rice, bringing home nearly 3.1 billion US dollars. The average rice export price increased 12% compared to the same period last year reaching 612 U.S. dollars per tons, 
The Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development said that Vietnam's unhusked rice output is expected to reach more than 43 million tons in 2024, which is enough to ensure domestic consumption and export demand of more than 8 million tons of husked rice. And that's it for this edition of PV TV News. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.